So today, what we're going to talk about, um, well, as I said in the newsletter, we've sort of been some uh, pretty heady topics the last, the first part of the year. And I'm sure everybody's cutting, hand chasing threads and doing offset turning and, you know, carving their bowls and everything. But um, so we're going to slow it down a little bit, a little bit easier. Um, so what we're going to talk about now is one of the biggest questions I see on, um, on some of the Facebook sites is people ask, you know, what tools should I buy? What, what set of tools should I buy? Um, and you get all kinds of different answers, but what I've done is I've sort of distilled it down to what, uh, basically the six basic tools that be good for every, every new trader to start with. Um, I'm sure all of us have a lot more than six tools that we use, but, um, but this sort of like gets, gets you going, lets you do just about everything you would want to do in um, and turning, lets you try any kind of bowl or spindle turning you would, would want to try. So I'm going to switch cameras here for a minute. I think it's this one. There. So the, these are my, the six I've started with. So the first one's a spindle roughing gouge. Um, so basically I can also have, this is a D-way one. I think it's about three quarters. And this is a sorby one, which is an inch and a quarter. Um, around one inch is a good, good starting size. Um, you see on the, on the sorby one, it's basically just like a bent a piece of metal. It's, it's not milled out of a solid bar with the D-way is. D-way starts with a solid bar and they mill it out. Um, the thing I remember about a spindle roughing gouge is this for spindle turning. So that's in the name. You don't want to use this on a bowl, on a cross grain bowl with the grain running bang, um, perpendicular to the lathe bed. You only want to use it when the grain's running with the lathe bed. And that's not the only tool you really have to worry about um, grain direction, but that's, so that's only for spindle turning. Uh, next is a 3 8 um, spindle gouge. So this is a that's a Thompson. I made my own handle for it. Um, so it's three eighths. It's a nice little fingernail grind on it. So that's just your basic, uh, basic one. And I also have a Sorby one. Uh, so there's a little bit of narrow grind on it. Uh, but those are both three eighths. Uh, next is the the dreaded skew that everybody hears about and, and thinks is scary. Um, but we're gonna look at it a little bit and they're really not that scary. To do a planing cut is uh, pretty pretty straightforward and easy. The, the one secret, which we'll get to, is when you're cutting and you're holding the tool, you always wanna keep your cut at the center point or lower. You get above that center part, that's when you get the catch. But, um, but anyway, we'll talk about that a little bit more today when we're turning our gonk. Um, next, you want some kind of parting tool. Again, this is a Thompson. Uh, this one's a, just a straight parting tool. You can also get, this is a, a Sorby diamond one. So you see it's uh, diamond shaped on it. So the sides. So what this does is this, when you're cut in, this gives you a little bit of lee, um, clearance. So it doesn't pinch as well. Where this one, you're not going to get any clearance. So you sort of have to take it out and widen your hole as you go down. But uh, but either one, you can also get uh, this is a, a thin parting tool, which I got from D-Way. And I say it's a uh, again just it's it's thin. That's this claim to fame. So if you have um, a really expensive wood, or if you don't have much wood that you don't want to waste as much. It's about half the disc, you know, half the width of that one. And that's a D-way tool. Um, so next is a half inch bowl gouge. Um, now one thing, this is a Sorby. You want to be a little careful when you actually order them. Um, if you, sometimes when you buy this one from Sorby, they'll call it a, a three eighths. Because in the UK, when they measure it, they measure this flute width. That's what the they they measure when you buy it in the United States. They measure the bar 
diameter. So this is a half inch bar, uh, a three eighths flute. So, but in the US just you'll give them the bar size and places like Woodcraft usually translate into US sizes. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you are over in England, you wanna buy a bull gouge, uh, just keep that in mind. You might get, end up with a smaller gouge than you want. And the sixth tool, I'm just gonna throw in is a, it's a round nose scraper. I actually did a heavy, um, a negative rake grind on this one, but uh, that's just, I wanted to try that out. Um, and this is just a, a one inch, so it's not real thick, but it's has a little bit of meat to it. And that's a D-way. So those are the six tools we're gonna use. And we're gonna basically use mostly these four tonight. And the next month we'll use these two to try to small bowl. So put these aside right now. But if you're looking for a set, if you don't want to shop individually for all these, um, a Sorby has a, a set with these six tools in it. Uh, it's about 300, a little bit over $300 retail. Uh, when it's on Sorby days, when they have sales, you can get it sometimes down to about 250. I've seen it. Um, also, if you don't want to go for the, that much for new turners, uh, Benjamin's Best has the same set for just over a hundred. Um, so that, that'll get you going. Does anyone have any questions about tools or have any additions they want to throw in there? Did I miss anything that if someone would rather have than these six? Tom, okay. are those special ferrules with the screws in them? These are from Cindy Drozda. Um, I got them from her, but I think it's, um, Mike, is it Hasselak? Also sells a similar thing. What they are is um, aluminum is insert. Yep. So I can take these, this out, and I can use that handle for a different tool. So the, the blue is a half inch, red is three eighths, and then there's a gold one, which is five eighths. Um, it just lets you. I mean, if I was going to do a demo or something, I could take a couple handles and all my steel and be a little bit easier to transport. It's also easier to sharpen the tool if you take it out because you're not, you know, playing with this handle off back yeah. here. Hey, Tom, uh, the only thing I would advise someone if they were buying their first bowl gouge, I would go with a 3 eighths versus the half. I have both uh -huh. and the, the half stays in the rack most of the time. I just uh, prefer taking less of a cut. It's more comfortable for me. Uh -huh. Is that a half inch, uh, three eighths bar? It's a, a three, three eighths. Yeah, it's a three yeah. inch bar. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's, that's why it does take a little bit less of a cut. So this is nicer. The only thing I didn't like about, I do have a three eighths and I thought about that, but um, for me, it has a little bit too much vibration. Um, maybe I try, my, my, my cuts are too heavy. But uh, yeah, it just that's that's just me. If I was giving the advice, I'd, yep. I'd emphasize that just a yeah. little. Bit. This is my three eighths. I actually have it in a one of my old spindle handles. Um, and actually, I might pull this off for the gong because it's really good at going cross grain across the bottom of it. That, that's my three eighths one. Hmm. So, hey Tom, the only thing is I would mention that the. Uh, Benjamin's Best is from Penn State Industries. Ah, good point, yes. Yep. So, um, someday I will actually buy a brand name tool. <laughs> so, but um, now one thing to, to remember is a lot of places sell eight piece sets. And in the eight piece sets, you get like three different spindle gouges, you know, two different skews. Usually you don't get a bowl gouge with them. Um, and depending on where you get it, like if you get it from Harbor Freight, you're going to see these, they, they kindly call them English, English gouges because, you know, there's a, a piece of metal bent, you know, into a quarter round, um, and come down to a ferrule. Um, I, I would avoid those because uh, while well, they also come with the, the coveted spear point scraper, which, uh, nobody uses except for 
yeah, so th this is, so that's out of one of those cheap sets. <laughs> and um, I actually use this as the spear point scraper, which I use to cut the CA glue off my pen bushings. So it actually is useful, <laughs> just not for wood turning. But, um, but yeah, so the, the six piece set that like Sorby sells, that they sort of hit the sweet spot as far as uh, useful tools that will do do a lot the lot that you want to do without duplicating things, without giving you too much fluff. So um, good. So anybody any comments or talk about contents? If not, we'll get on to turning a gonk. Stuff out of the way. So what are we going to make today? That's what we're going to make today. So it's basically a a, a body and a hat. And then we turn one nose, and we turn another ball for the tip of the hat. So it's all spindle turning, all the grains running, you know, up right parallel with the lathe bed here. Um, and we're gonna play a little bit with with color. You know, we use different, you know, different colors on the hats to make it whatever. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start with the, turning the body, and we're gonna turn the body and put a little turn a little dowel on top to go into the hat, just to hold it there a little bit um, firmer. Uh, then we're gonna make the, the balls on top. And so to do this, what we're gonna start with, is a piece of poplar which I'm gonna use for the hat this piece of cherry for the body. And we're gonna turn the two balls out of this uh, apple pen like which I have. Okay, so, so we'll start with the body first. Now what I've done. Can you tell us the size of the wood? Uh, sure. Uh, so this is, let's see. It's about an inch and three quarters square. And it's probably about just over four inches long. We'll probably use about two inches of it. Um, the hat has to be a little bit bigger because you want to overhang. So this one's about two and a quarter. So it's about a half inch larger. And this is seven inches long, but again, we're probably gonna use like half of it. And then the pen blank is about, uh, this one's about seven eighths square and five and a half long. So again, you can make whatever size you want, just, you know, increase the wood size to make up for that. These will make things, you know, this size, in this size range is what we're gonna do, so. So what we start with, is first, uh, this is just a, a center finder. And what it does is it goes on the end of the block and lets you draw lines on. And I usually draw four lines in each direction. And then what you do is you end up with place where you can probably just uh, eye up the center then to be in the middle of all those lines. And and lost my center punch. So we can use this. I really like this style. This it's like spring loaded. So you push it and it clicks in and there's a nice hole. So I'm 
put it on each side. Um, I already marked this one, so. I'm afraid so the automatic center punch, which is what Tom's using for like three bucks. It's awesome. Yep, that's definitely a good Harbor Freight purchase. So, so some things are good at Harbor Freight and some things you should stay away from. What did you call it? An automatic center punch. Okay. Yep. Um, now, what I'm going to use is I have a center, which I, which is fitting into my chuck. So, um, you know, if, if I didn't have this going into the chuck, I just I'm doing that just so I can save a little bit of time not taking the chuck on and off. But uh, you no, know, I could also be using this one and just fit this right into my Morse taper. It doesn't really matter which type of center you use. This is, um, it's, it's not an actual step center, but it's modeled after the step center. Step center is a brand name, so. So these that fit, just fit in your chuck and they um, tighten up. So we don't have to worry about taking the chuck on and off all the time if I'm doing a lot of different turning. That in, bring up the tail stock. Turn it up. Make sure. Move my tool rest in, make sure it's clearing. Always hand spin, make sure you're not going to hit anything. I need to go grab safety boxes. Be right back. Okay. Now, ideally, if you're not giving a demo and talking to people. I should use the full face shield, which goes on, but it's sort of hard to be talking and give a demo when you're wearing one of these. And I will wear this next week when we're doing the bowl. But uh, for spindle turning, things are captured in there. I'm not too worried about things flying off there. So let's go with glasses for today. Don't tell the AAW. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is make this round. Um, the tool to do that is the roughing gouge. So what we're going to do is my roughing gouge angle there is, um, I think it's around 50 degrees or so. So I'm going to start with the handle down, pretty far down on the thing. Let me see if I can get a better shot of this. One. There we go. So we're gonna start with the with the handle down pretty low. Um, I'm missing everything here, and so we're gonna turn on, turn the speed down, start bringing this up slowly. Make sure everything sounds good, feels good. Check the things nice and tight. Let's speed up a little bit. So on something this size, I'm going to start around a thousand RPM, um, and I'm going to start. What you want to do is you anchor the tool. Every people call it the ABCs. So you anchor the tool, present the bevel, and then start cutting. So what I'm doing is I'm just raising the handle until it starts cutting. Off. 
And that's about this, the um, roughing gouge. You can run it this way, that way, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, if you put your hand over it, you can stop the, you know, the, the shavings from hitting you. But there's really no, it, it's a very friendly tool. So if you want to get a little bit cleaner cut, you can present it at more of a 45 degree angle. And I have it cutting right about on the center line. So we can slow it down. You see we're starting to get rounded edges there. So a little bit to go. Um, and so let's, I'm gonna turn the speed up a little bit now. And I'm about 1600. And we'll get this ticket all the way around. Do is you're rounding, you can put it on and uh, see. It doesn't bounce around, you're pretty close to, to round. So you can stop it, take a look. Yeah, I still have a little bit of flat there, a little flat there. There's some flat. So, finish this up. So now we have a nice round piece there. Now I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put this into my uh, jaws here. Didn't need enough room for the... So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my skew and I'm gonna do a, a peeling cut. Oops, that should have... Okay, the, the um, roughing gouge is cutting right around on the center line of this. The ski, you want to go a little, up a little bit higher and get this, take that in a little bit. So now I'm going to cut a tendon on here, which will fit into my, my jaws here. And for the peeling cut on a skew, you take it, anchor it on the, on the tool rest, drag the bevel, and then lift the handle, and you start cutting. And for these jaws, it's a slight dovetail. So I made a, I don't know if you can see the dovetail in there. Um, but uh, so it's a little bit of a dovetail. And uh, again, the other thing is, which I'm gonna make, is this needs to be flat here. So I can use the skew as a scraper in this case. Okay, so now we got the center. So what I, I'm going to do is I'm, I'm putting in the jaws, but I'm not going to tighten it all up yet. So I put this back in that center punched hole I made. So that's going to make sure this is going to run as true as possible. You always go get a little bit of difference going into the chuck and flipping around like that, but hopefully not too much. So. Um, so what I'm going to do next is look about so I'm gonna make my body probably about uh, up there. So what I'm gonna do is take my 
printing tool. I made a pencil line there. Now I'm going to go in and make a just basically mark where that is so I can start shaping it. So again, you're going to anchor onto the tool rest, uh, rub the bevel, then lift the handle until it starts to cut. And going a little bit, then I'm going to make the cut a little wider so I don't uh, catch it there. So I'm going to start making my body here and I'm going to make a little bit of a barrel shape. So just my thought is um, probably the, I'll put it's just way straight about there. Um, I think that's roughly one third, two thirds golden mean somewhere in there, but it looks good to me. So that's what I go by. Um, so now I'll start with my, um, so let me get some of this out of the way. get some of this out of the way to saddle this nut. Rub. Now, for the skew, what you want to do is anchor it onto the tool rest. Then I'm going to start cutting. I'm going to rub the bevel first. Then I'm just going to move it down and twist my wrist a little bit. So it starts cutting. And you can see where it's starting to cut. I'm trying to cut right about there. I know we can feel. Take that down a little bit. That's going to be the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing on the top. I'm going to start up here a little bit. If you're doing a planing cut, it's, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Now, if you don't want to use a skew for that, um, well, first I'll show you why you would use a skew to start with. If you look at that finish, back up. Hard to see the finish, but um, this is basically, I, I could start sending this at, you know, three, 320 probably. Um, it still gives a beautiful finish right off the tool. So the best you can probably find. But um, but let's say you don't want to use the, the skew yet. What else could you use? Well, you could keep using this, this little roughing gouge. You know, that's going to work fine. Oops. I need to make that a little lower for the Roughing gouge. Anchor, rub the bevel, raise the handle, and cut. Um, when you're spindle cutting, you always want to cut downhill. So, right, so the, the bigger diameter to the smaller diameter. Mm -hmm. Just roll it in there. Uh, so the spindle roughing gouge works great for that. I could also use my um, my spindle gouge, three inch spindle gouge. And again, that's rub the bevel and until you start cutting. Roll that down.
So now what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to pull the I'm going to pull the uh, tail stock back a little bit because I want to just do a little bit of cleanup on this bottom part. Make sure it's uh, straight. So I'm going to start with the um, the parting tool. Now I'm a little bit unsupported here, so I'm going to take a nice easy cut. I'm not going to try to dig in there. Take a lot and um, and go just. Anchor, rub the bevel. Just start cutting and then. There we go. So now my bottom is nice and straight. I made mean, the bottom a little bit uh, concave. So it's going to rest on this outer spot here. It's not going to rock on the metal at all. So, um, so now I still have a lot of wood in here. I'm going to make that little dowel. I'm going to do that after I do my sanding. So I'm going to sand this, put a little bit of finish on it, and do do that while I still have a little bit of support there. Any questions or any other tools? So, I'll start around 240. Turn my speed down. And I'm going to be using this as Abernet. Um, so, it's um, for this one, it's probably, it doesn't matter because, but the, it's like a screen. So, it doesn't jam up as much, doesn't load up as much. So. And let's see, normally, again, if I'm not giving a demo, I have my dust collector running. But if I did that, then you would hear nothing else. So we'll just do What's the grid on that screen? 240. This one is 240. I have okay. it up to 600. Thank you. So, and so that's 240. Doesn't take much. If you make clean cuts, the sanding goes pretty quick. Now next week we do bowls. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a challenge. But the um, spindle sanding, usually there's not much you need to do, well, except for on here. That, that end grain is going to need a little bit more work. Um, um, do you have a reverse direction when you're sanding? Mm. Okay. To tell the truth, I almost never do, unless I got a, if I have a real, real difficult bowl. It's, it's, it has a real rough spot that I might, um, but uh, usually no. Usually if I'm going forward is all I really need. That's just me, I, I don't know. A lot, I know a lot of people swear by it. They'll, they'll switch direction every other grit. But, um, but what I usually do is for spindle turning, you know, I'll sand and I'll turn it off and I'll just sand with the grain. That'll pretty much get all the scratches out. And I see down here, I, I could be doing some more, but I'm not going to bother. This is end grain, so this is going to be a little bit harder to sand. Um, what I should have done is, is go in there with a, my spindle gouge. I would have cleaned it up a little better than the parting tool. But I'm trying to show you a different, couple, different ways to do it. So this next will go 320. Okay, so we're going to pretend that's that's all sanded and ready to go. 
Um, so next step is, well, this is on the lathe. I want to put a little bit of a finish on it. So what I'm going to do is first thing, I have some denatured alcohol. I'm just going to take that and I'm going to clean it up a little bit. This will wipe the, the dust out of the pores a little bit if it's a more open open grain wood. Um, the cherry really doesn't, just cleans it up. It doesn't really do much uh, to fill the pores or anything. And And then I'm going to use, um, this is um, Def Sanding Sealer, and I don't know where my can is. What I do though is I take the Def Sanding Sealer and I thin it one-to-one uh, -one with lacquer thinner. That's my, and that's basically my sanding sealer. So this will seal the surface. Um, so any other finish I put on top of it will go on much easier. So I just take the speed down so I don't get sprayed. See, this will soak in pretty well. Um, and so let that dry out a little bit. It dries fairly quickly on the lathe. You know, it's spitting. Put another coat on it for that. Okay, so that's dry already. And now what kind of finish should we put on this? Now I'm gonna be wanting to glue the fur on here for his beard. So I don't wanna do any wax or anything like that. So what I'm gonna do is use a friction polish. Uh, where is my friction polish? Some myelins here. This, one, this one's old, so hopefully it'll still work. Myelins is a little bit fresher. Um, and you can also make your own friction polish. It's, um, if you want, it's just equal parts of um, boiled linseed oil, shellac, de waxed shellac, and denatured alcohol. So just equal parts of those and you can make your own friction polish. So, so what I'm gonna do with this is put it onto a little towel and wipe it on. And then I'm gonna turn the lathe on, get the speed up. And it's friction polish, so I'm gonna give it a little bit of Push on a little bit, make it a little bit of heat. That's what's gonna give it the shine. There we go, nice and shiny. Nice, simple finish. Uh, you can put a couple coats on there if you want it to build up a little bit. Though it's shellac and alcohol, so it's not gonna really build up much. because the alcohol uh, dissolves the shellac underneath it. So you really don't build up, it's, but it does it here. And the one trick with um, friction polish is don't put it on too thick. Otherwise you'll get lines. So, which is actually the trick to all finishes. Okay, so there we have our body almost done. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn this down up here and make a little down top. 
which will then fit into a hole on the uh, on the hat side to make sure everything's centered. Anchor, bevel, and So this is a little trick I learned from uh, Captain Eddie a long time ago. I bought a cheap set of um, Harbor Freight wrenches. And I just cut this one down a little bit on the grinder. So it's this has a little sharp edge on it. And let's go under here. Use that. And I get a perfect. Perfect three sixteenths of an inch time. Okay, so I'm gonna cut up here a little bit more. There we go. That's the body. The next step is make our hat. I'm gonna go back to the center. Any questions about any of those? Anything we used there or what we could have used, not used? What was the formula for the fiction polish? Fiction polish? It's uh, one part de wax shellac. So I just get bullseye or whatever. Um, also look out for the color. Some of it's blonde, some of it's orangey. Um, but I, I just buy standard bullseye shellac. Um, one part denatured alcohol, which is the thinner for shellac. Then one part boiled in seed oil. You could probably also right. use the, the like walnut oil or something like that, but boiled in seed oil is the, uh, is the original. And that's also called, um, in Ca Captain Eddie's parlance, that's OB Shine Juice. So. It's, it's basically the same as, as Mylan's um, friction polish. Um, what was the uh, total length of that body, finished length? Oh, finished body? Two inches, right on the nose. Two inches. And the diameter. Two inches. Diameter. So it looks like I'm about inch and just under an inch and a half at the top. Just over an inch and a half on the bottom. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna Start this one already forty marked. Oh, which I have one more center mark there. So I already marked my pencil lines on there with the center finder. You can also just add this up since you're turning it round. And if you're off a little bit, it'll fix itself as you turn it. And everything 
up. Okay, so now we're gonna make this round. Um, I'll show you a little bit of doing the peeling cuts. So basically, how do you how do you guys want me to make it round? What tool do you want me to use? So we can use the bowl gouge, we can use the roughing gouge, we can use the skew. Uh, the spindle gouge will take a while. I'd rather not use that. Any preferences? Roughing gouge. Roughing gouge. Okay, I'm actually going to get my big one out. This is my big sorby one. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to work here. Okay, so okay, so I'm hitting the bevel now, anchored on the full rest. With the handle, so I start cutting. The other thing to notice is I'm not moving just my arms, I'm moving my whole body. Let me put that up. Let's let my mouse go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift my weight a little bit so that I can I can just quit, move my whole body make this cut. a little high. Don't be afraid to try different tool rest sites, you know, and, and to see if it cuts better. Um, you should want the, the cutting edge to be right at the midpoint. That's what that sweet spot, maybe a little, little above, never below. Shavings off. Okay. Okay, so a little there. That's it. So my center was a little off, that's why I got flat there. Okay, so now I'm all round. And true confession wise, I usually will reach up here and touch it while it's still spinning, but that's sort of a no no. So. <laughs> so now I'm, let's see, where am I here? So I'm right around just over two inches in diameter. So, yeah, that's about right. Maybe a little bit, yeah, that's good. I think I'll keep it there. So, um, next thing I wanna do is make a tenon so I can fit this back into the chuck. And for that, See. Yeah, I'll do it on this end. Okay. 
but then kind of just with a skew, so I can put the tool rest up a little higher. Skew usually likes the tool, the um, rest up a little bit higher on the, on the blank. Anchor, bevel, and there's the hand to the peeling top. You always want to make sure the tool is solid on the on the rest before you let it touch the wood. That's when a lot of catches happen. You get to go a little bit too fast and touch the wood before it's the tool is actually anchored. And it slams down on the rest and makes loud noises and scares everybody. So. Now, when you make these tenons, you want to keep try to keep them pretty close to the um, the closed size of the jaws. You don't want the jaws to be open very wide. Um, so you would want maybe like a eighth to a quarter inch between the jaws, ideally. It doesn't always work out like that, but that's what you want to shoot for. Back to the overhead. If there are any questions, just yell them out. Okay, so this is going to be the top of the hat. So I'm going to make the bottom maybe around here. Now I'm going to make a pointy hat. Uh, you can make top hats, you can make full bowler hats, you can make sombreros, whatever you want to do. We're going to go for the, the classic design today. So again, I'll... Um, I'll demarcate where that is with the uh, parting tool. Here, bevel, bring the handle and start cutting. Okay, so now we'll go Use the spindle roughing gouge now to start getting our our shape. Anchor, bevel, cut. Thank you. 
Turns away. Now again, I'm unsupported now, so I want to be very careful of taking my cuts. I don't want to force it. You can hear the vibration because I'm hanging out so far. Good. Not too much trouble from the vibration. It's going slow enough. I wasn't making curves or anything. So now what I'm going to do here at the very top of where I'm going to be drilling a hole, I'm just going to take a skew and make sure that's cleaned up a little bit. There we go. So little I mean, a little bit of concave, so when I put the drill bit in there, it's going to be able to go right in. And now I'm going to play around with this rim a little bit. I need to roll it off this direction a little. We're gonna drill a little hole up here for uh, when we turn the ball. I'm gonna put a little uh, dowel pin on there to fit into the this little hole here. So I'm gonna take off my live center. Use a Jacob's chuck into my tail center. And this is the magic gunk hatch drill bit. It's scientifically determined to be the best size for a gunk hat, which means that I reached into the drill bit case and that's what it came out. So I'll take it, it's a small drill bit, so I think the speed pit around 900. Yeah, we're gonna just go in. Anyone wants to know what size that actually is? Uh, that's one eighth inch. So the one thing you want to make sure is that you leave enough meat around the outside there to so you don't uh, start breaking away. Okay, so now I'm ready to 
send this up. And I'm gonna start around 240 on this one. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop there because I'm gonna color this. And if you go down, if you stand up uh, too high, a lot of times the color will, won't sink in. It'll just you'll uh, burnish the um, the wood and it'll just roll off. Probably not so much with poplar, but definitely with like maple. It looks like that. Okay. So. Play around a little bit. So I think anyone have any color preferences for them? I'm thinking a green hat. What do you think? Now this dye is, um, it's a water-based dye. I got a, a sample pack. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but um, a little bit of color goes a long way, so you don't really need much. Tom, are you gonna raise the grain before you use that? Um, <clears throat> the grain will raise, so that's probably not a bad idea. Let me do that. With water-based, it'll raise the grain, so you raise the grain first. That's very true. Usually what I find out is I end up um, going back and signing it anyhow, so. But let's what's do that. The brand, what's the brand of that, those uh, dyes? Uh, they're called in, Intrusive Color Collection. They're from, um, if anyone knows Martin Saban Smith? Yeah. The, it's his product. And I get it from the Walnut Log down in, um, I think he's in Missouri. Um, Jeff Horn on. Straight out of the bottle. Yep, yep. It's 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 already a it's the proper strength. So they want to see that. Here's the oh, that's the box. You get uh, twelve different colors with it. Okay. 
any sawdust. So. so usually I put these on so I can still see the grain shining through. Yeah, I should be wearing gloves. <laughs> why, why did you say something about 10 minutes ago? <laughs> That's okay. I'm working at home so no one's going to see. Yeah, but is, is it hard to take off? Yeah, it, it is. You got to wash a okay. couple times. It does, doesn't come off with soap and water? Uh, with enough soap and water, but it's yeah, it's not easy. My fingers will be green tomorrow. Now, one thing I did forget is this thing's going to be overhanging a little bit. And I forgot to do the um, the underside. So. Sand that I get some color in there. That's going to be visible. Don't do too much of this sand. It's no fun to watch. But I just want to get a little bit in there. Now you will find one thing interesting on dyes, right here where it's almost flat grain, it did not go in very well. But everywhere else where it's more angled and you have more end grain um, exposed, it sucks in there much, much better. So, but what we'll do here is to make sure we accent that a little bit. Skew. Just a little V cut. Just accentuate that. There we go. A little bit of a hat band. Okay, so the next step is uh, we did we drilled for the the top ball. Made that, colored it in there. So now we gotta cut this off pretty much flat. So what I'm gonna do is again, use my parting tool. Put them to work.
to cut off that little nub there. Okay, so now we have the hat and the body. I'm actually going to drill a little hole in there for the that dowel. So let me see what size that is. Okay, so here's a trick I like. Um, well, I know this one's going to be pretty close to what three sixteenths we said, but um, I have my little drill index here, and I can just find the perfect size. Oh, and I forgot. I should have put um, sanding sealer on the hat. But um, we'll skip that for now just because it's a little bit. I don't want to wait for it to dry. So we'll do that after it's all together. So we'll mark the center. go. Okay, so now next we're going to turn the uh, turn the, the top off the hat and his and of all his nose and we'll be all going to put them together. So any questions on any of the tools or techniques? I assume that hat's about three inches. Uh, good point. All right. Three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. And the base is right around two. Mom, um, could you hold it up to, under the uh, camp? Sure. So. That's what we got so far. So I undercut that a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now switch to a different chuck, with just a different set of jaws. Now, I've just done something a little weird because I switched from a record power chuck to a Nova chuck and they tighten in different directions. So <laughs> I have to remember to double check. I'm actually tightening and not loosening. And I 
Actually, I should not have done that yet. Will not hold my center for. Oh, maybe it will. Right. I guess that'll hold. Turn between centers. Okay, so a nice small piece of apple here. And I'm gonna just crank the speed up pretty high. Just take my skew. I'll do a bunch of peanut butter cuts here. This is that peeling cut. Like I say, um, as long as you cut down below center, just take it, start twisting your wrist until it starts cutting, and go for it. around.
button it up. Let's try that one. Close. Okay. Mark. Sun sphere. This is another sun sphere. And then the spindle gal can just take it and, and swallow the. I'm working in towards the chuck just so I don't give it too much too much stress going against the against the pointed edge. Yeah, let's start taking a little bit more. What's that? Microphone is unmuted. On that little part there, okay, parting tool. Yeah. I think we're done. We're not, but I can't get back. Can you figure it out? I can hear you, Anna. I know, not supposed to be. <laughs> All 
He's still running. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just like a pair of calipers to match that drill bit I used to drill the hole in the hat. And I'm going to use that to make sure we get this little dial down. Tom, you rounded the points of those calipers, right? Yep. Yeah, those those points are nice and rounded. So my, we're, these are my grandfather's. They've been rounded a long time. It wasn't a turner, but uh, but he used them a lot, I think. This one's so small, I probably would try, I would do this while it's running, but this one's just a little bit too small for me to risk that. Okay, I'm almost there, so what I'm gonna do is just get a little bit more sanding. Uh, still. Pretty close, if not. Just a bit more on top there. We'll do that. Our third piece on. And let's see. So that ball is 
about five eighths of an inch in diameter. Okay, so I need his nose. So that I think I'm gonna go a little bit, a little bit smaller than the. What's nice about these, they don't have to be perfect sears or anything. You can make them any shape you want. This down close to what the two thousand and a Do it. So we'll cut this off. Okay. So cut his nose now. So what I'm going to do. 
I need to figure out where I want his face to be. I think I'm going to pick that because I don't know. Don't really see that as being anything special. So I'll put his nose right about there. And up a little bit higher because they want to give enough room for the beard to grow around it. So to my drill. Okay, so it's right around there. So you can tell it's all a lot of precise majoring here. We have so far. Bring down a little bit. So now I'm gonna put the beard on them. And to do that, I just have a bunch of a bunch of different colors here for making you know a redhead, blonde. Bit of gray beard, maybe. I tell look good. Tom, we'll go gray. What's the beard material? Uh, it's some kind of fake fur that I got from Amazon. Um, so it's on a cloth back, and this stuff is not very good. It's just not very thick. Um, you can get better stuff, but uh, it's, this does the job. But um, there is definitely better stuff out there. So, but you can get up Michael's Hobby Lobby. Oh, yep, no, also black. I think we'll go with gray for this one. Let's see. So, I'm going to switch this over to the that one. Nope, not that one. Okay. So now the only thing is, when you cut this though, so we're going to take this. It does not take very much. You can see where I, I cut out for one I already made. So it's not very much at all. So you're going gonna to see how much you need. Let me go there to there and then down to about there. So let's mark it on back here with a Sharpie. Now, I think the thing about when you're cutting it is you don't want to cut into the hair. You only want to basically want to cut this um, cloth backing. So, and I, I've tried this in different ways. Um, probably, if anyone's out there actually sews, they may know a better way. Um, but what I've come up with. I use an X-Acto knife. And get 
Watson. Switch to a different camera here. Let me go back overhead. So what I'm going to do is just lightly because I don't want to go into the. I only want to cut the cloth backing basically. I don't want to go get into cutting the hair because you want that to stay nice and full. Some people do this with scissors and they're just really careful to um, keep keep the scissors from cutting only the cloth and not the, the hair, but I'm not, I haven't had as much luck with that. Tom, have you thought about using a vacuum cleaner to, to kind of suck on the hair to pull it straight away? And then you could cut it with scissors pretty easily? Um, I don't know if that would work or not. I have to think about that. Let's see, I find if I just go slow enough, I end up just cutting, basically just cutting the cloth, and that's worked pretty well. Just takes a while. I cut most of the hair intact, so I didn't cut off this. You don't want to cut this part off. This is what you want to worry about. So, okay. Now, the other thing you want to do is uh, you need to cut a slot where the nose is. So, about in the middle there. Okay, so now, oh, not big enough yet. There we go. Maybe just a little bit of a. Trick is you want to get the beard up around the nose. I know we're on it. <laughs> so what I think I want to do is move this on and then I'll put the nose in. Okay, so now you can use high fabric. Glue would be the better choice, but I'm going to go with uh, thick CA for now. Thick CA works pretty well. It doesn't soak in very much, so you don't end up messing up the, the hair. I 
I'm gonna make sure this goes right to the top of the body. And also to each side, you wanna make sure there's glue underneath. I put a little bit of glue in for the nose. from the top. And there we go. Show them off to the there he is all together. Great, Tom. So, okay. Any questions on the tools or anything? Very nice. Tom, he's super cute. Thank you so much for inviting me to the meeting. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, next month we'll, we'll go over, we'll do the same thing, same six tools, but we'll turn a bowl. So we'll use the bowl gouge and maybe that scraper. Um, that run nose scraper, and maybe maybe a couple of the other things we'll see. Yeah. So, yeah. great. Tom, Tom, if you were making a bunch of those for a show, what not? How long does it take you to make something like that? Well, when I made I made like four or five of them in a row, and what I did is I made the, I made all the bodies first, yeah. then I turned the hats, then I turned the noses and and the balls for the hats. Um, yeah. So that, that goes a lot quicker if you do it in the assembly line fashion. Do you know I, out here? I can get about three or four more balls out of this one, out of this one blank. So yeah. Um if you do it like that, um I think in a couple of hours I can have five or six of them done. Right. Hey, on on the nose is um the locating diameter sticking out of the body just a bit to keep the nose away from the from the body or does the nose go flush to the body? The nose is uh, flush to the beard. Okay, so it, but, it sticks out like the thickness of the beard. Yeah, yeah, what it is, I put the beard on first then put the nose in. Okay, so. and do, you, do you usually finish everything with finish before you do the assembly? I usually do, uh, at least with, um, I would at least put sanding sealer on them if nothing else um and then maybe i'll like you know, but but yeah before I, I put the beard on though you have to have it all finished because i can't do any spray lack or anything at this point um what's the thing oh. got so it was me i was wondering what the feasibility of turning the ball on the hat uh, that's nothing you can do. Um, I just like the, I like having a different oh, okay. color. That's why I do it separately. Okay. But no, you can definitely do the ball and the hat. I mean, get, make one piece. You actually make this whole thing one piece and then just put a nose in. <laughs> it's the other way to do it. Um, and if you do that, you can you, you, you paint the hat. You know, if you're, if you're better at painting than I am, um, you can do that and get, you know, different, separate the colors a little bit. But uh, I like, I like to use them different wood though. I like the different, um, different textures, different colors for the wood. So, in fact, I think yeah. one of the, one of the, um, one of the YouTubes I said in the, in the um, newsletter, I think he did a one piece hat on one of them, someone. And I've seen different kind of hats. So you can do different, they can look different, different beards. Um, 
different hairstyles. So you can do a lot, a lot of different things with them. Let's let your artistic nature come out. It's, it's really cute. Does, oh, does the shop cat play with it? <laughs> no, actually, she's funny. She doesn't play with things. Yeah. She's not much of a, a player. She scratches a lot of things, but um, yeah, she's not a player. She runs around, she'll scratch almost everything, but toys are not her thing. So. Well, it was a good demo, Tom. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Good job, um, thank you. Good, I hope people got something out of the, the, the tools too. That, that was the big thing to try to um, make that all work out. Well, being a newer so. lathe user, I would just like to reassure you that yes, it was very useful seeing which pieces were what and what they were supposed to be used for. So thank you for that. Oh, great. Thank you. Glad you enjoyed it. Good job. Say, so come back next next month. We'll um, redo it. And uh, this will be, should be back up on YouTube at some point um, fairly quickly. I guess Elliot does a good job getting the things up there. So. I just try to figure out how to get myself.